Good afternoon, members and friends. I'm glad to welcome you all today to our June webinar that is hosted by Fiber Connect Council, Mina. Our welcome extends to our members and their partners, and we hope all of you join our council and benefit from today's webinar. I would like to thank our council member R&M as well in accepting the invitation and presenting today's webinar with an expert speaker talking about high density for ultra broadband infrastructures and next generation networks, Mr. Shabu Vahid, business head public networks at Rifle and Dimasari Middle East, Africa and Turkey. Mr. Shabu is responsible for managing telecom projects within the region. He is also doing internal and external technical consulting, customer training in the telecom business segment. At R&M, he also acts as international product manager and takes care of local products, customization and innovation for our regional requirements. As a public network consultant in the region, he is part of many FTTH project success stories, not only in telecom sector, but also in the major city development and airport project from consulting through design and implementation phases. Shibu has more than 20 years of international experience in IT infrastructure projects. He possesses a wide experience in all the layers of OSI model in IT infrastructure, varying from software applications through network and storage equipment to passive cabling system. At R&M, he started up with responsibilities as a product manager and eventually emerged as an expert in fiber optic technology. For our attendees, please note that Mr. Shubu will answer your questions once he finished the presentation. Mr. Shubu, I am very happy to welcome you today. Please have the full floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Halud, for this nice uh, introduction. Um, uh, good afternoon, gentlemen and ladies. Today, the topic is high density for ultra broadband infrastructure the requirement for the next generation public networks. Before I go in detail of the technical part, I would like to uh, introduce our company to a few slides. Arnav is an internationally leading ICT provider. We started up our company 57 years ago. We are a family owned business uh, in Switzerland. We are recognized as the top three players in the Europe, Middle East, India and Japan. We have almost our presence in all the continents with direct offices in more than 40 different countries. We are contributing uh, our uh, part to the smart network connectivity for the public networks. Basically, you know that uh, FTTH is no longer a luxury. It, is be it has become a basic need like water and electricity. And Arnhem is contributing a lot uh, in terms of innovations and research and development in this field. And we are offering a lot of uh, different products uh, in this segment. We are a solution oriented company. Ba basically, uh, we have the technocrats uh, who can understand the requirements uh, uh, within the industry uh, applications. And we develop solutions based on the focus areas like public networks, which is basically the ILEX and CLEX of every country, the utility companies, the city development projects and the rail projects and so on. We have our international presence, uh, almost uh, all the countries in the world. And you can see that we have also regional headquarters uh, in different countries. Uh, like Western Europe, Eastern Europe, Middle East, and Turkey, and we have also in the Asia Pacific and in India. In the recent past, we have been growing heavily in terms of investments and also acquisitions of many factories and production centers, basically to strengthen our delivery capabilities and the research and development activities within our company. And this is really strengthening the company in terms of economic uh, as, as well as the solution offering capabilities for our customers. We all know that uh, the digitalization is today's industrial revolution. We are in the era of uh, industry for revolution, wherein uh, we have, we're talking about the artificial intelligence, robotics, the internet of things, 
autonomous vehicles and 3D printing applications, nanotechnology, biotechnology, and so on. You can see a numerous buzzwords in this slide. Basically, all of these applications needs the basic nervous system as the fiber optic network. Now, what does it mean for this application is the demand of the fiber is increasing day by day and as well as the broadband uh, connectivity is increasing day by day and hence there is a new infrastructure requirement in the industry. So what we are talking about is we, 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 we already know that now there is no more communication between the people, but the, actually the devices are communicating with each other. The machines have jumped into this communication world and the fiber has become the main nervous system, which carries the information from one point to another, and which is really critical for decision-making process for killer applications, including the autonomous vehicles and so on. So for these new services, a high density of fiber is needed and, and you know that uh, the small uh, cells and the edge data center has become uh, a new inevitability in the network. And this requires a lot of fiber in the access area, which is deployed also in the form of small cells in the 5G technology. So uh, the, the FTTX network uh, technology looks like a, a kind of a unified uh, pawn access platform, as you see on the slide. Basically, it's, it's a combination of several uh, legacy applications plus the future-oriented technology without affecting much on the uh, investment uh, part of it. For example, we have already invested heavily in several countries in the form of fiber optic network and any new in, uh, technologies uh, should be taking care about the existing investments in the field. And hence we have the unified pawn access platform ha has become a, a, a popular um, uh, uh, choice uh, by several operators in our region. Basically, uh, it, it gives us the option of uh, continuing the G-Pawn services that we are currently getting in and then giving the hybrid pawn and as well as the uh, future XWDM pawn, uh, which is really started up uh, in this uh, uh, industry, basically in our region as well. So the benefits, basically the unified platform is giving us a lot of benefit in terms of flexible networking. Uh, it supports all the, uh, all the traditional Starlink as well as the Ethernet ring. And it also supports the, uh, the existing uh, G-Pawn technology. So the, basically it uses the existing shelves, the racks, the ODFs and the other resources that has been already, deplo already deployed apart from the equipment that has been in the central offices. It reduces a, a, a greater amount of uh, capex in terms of uh, investments, as well as also there is no additional insertion losses, no additional power budget requirements in, in the case of an ODN network. And hence it saves a spare parts and maintenance costs and reduces the OPEX as well. So considering the uh, basic uh, savings in, in, in terms of both capex and OPEX, uh, the, the unified platform has become a, a choice by several operators in our region. And you know that there is a great evolution happening from uh, G-PON to XGS to NG-PON. And um, uh, during this advancement, uh, what is actually changing is basically the, the throughput and the bandwidth requirement is being exceedingly going to 10 gigabit per second uh, compared to the uh, 40 gigabit per second compared to the gigabit pawn and the 10 G pawn, uh, what, which is prevailing already in the network. So this is giving us uh, a lot of uh, chances to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to have the coexistence of the uh, existing network together with the uh, future network through the WDM uh, elements. The introduction of the WDM has uh, given us the choice of uh, upgrading uh, in, in, in terms of uh, the, uh, the speed as well as the new technology 
and all, without losing any um, services that is being delivered from the, the sources. So what is advantage? Uh, Mr. Shubu, Mr. Shubu, um, I'm sorry, but the attendees are saying that the sound is not clear. Uh, is it audible to you, Kulik? Yes. All right. So basically, the advantages here is that we have in in TWD and Pawn, we have uh, we have the flexibility uh, in overlaying different services through uh, lambdas and. Um, and this is giving us the uh, multiple opportunities of serving uh, subscribers without losing the power over the single fiber. And this has been a choice of network uh, today for many operators combining the NG.2 together with the coexistence of the existing GPON by WDM applications. Now, what does it mean uh, for the fiber optic infrastructure is the fiber density is increasing we have to deploy a lot of fibers in the access network and the network uh, has to be flexible and upgradable anytime. And the scalability of the solutions is, is the main requirement because as and when you upgrade your fibers, you quickly have to adopt the network connectivity by adding more and more components. So the products that is being deployed should exhibit the property of scalability and modularity. Highest quality of connectivity has become another topic because it's all about the uh, power budget and the optical loss and the high, the low loss connectivity, how much that we deploy uh, into our network that uh, will give us a lot of flexibility in upgrading uh, to the network, higher grades of network without losing much of the power. Now, if you, uh, if you greatly look into the GPON um, and uh, NGPON too, the differences is that Basically, uh, we are talking about uh, in from the, the laser power has been increased from 1.6 milliwatt to uh, uh, 10 milliwatt, which is really a great amount of power that we are going to use in the NG.2. At the same time, the, the band radius of the fiber optic uh, network that has been uh, installed as well as uh, that has been also going to deploy in the future should exhibit a good amount of band radius by having uh, optimum uh, devices that is being used in the fiber uh, passive, passive network. So here, while we migrate from GPON to NGPON2, uh, we are talking about the higher split ratios in the network, and we also have a higher reach, and this re definitely need a higher amount of power budget in the network. And this is the reason why we need to be using the uh, uh, the standard grade B connectors, which will give us more room in terms of uh, connectivity uh, power budget. So in summary, uh, we have much more uh, traffic compared to what we have today in the future. And we need much more fibers uh, to address all these requirements requirements of new applications. So we need to change the architecture, the topology, and even media that we are using for our transport network today. So this is how, in my opinion, the future network infrastructure look like. There we have the central office or the head end. And there you have also a ring of data centers uh, around, which is uh, providing the collocation business. And then you have the uh, public network, which is the FTTX. Uh, the public network addresses the, uh, the nationwide uh, uh, residential and office users, basically through various different technologies that is available from the fiber to the home, to the XDSL, which is basically VDSL, and also the 5G uh, fixed wireless solutions. So when we have this mix of network, we need to have a high quality fiber in terms of uh, the connectivity losses and the flexibility of the solutions to uh, quickly adapt to the changing needs of the, uh, uh, of the integration of the different networks that is coming to 
existence in the uh, in in the uh, in the in the field and the products has to be highly modular and it should be simply uh, able to change a few things by doing customization and to be able to address all the requirements that is coming in the uh, future now it's a great amount of uh, challenges for the planners that they cannot foresee all the different requirements uh, uh, coming uh, in the in two years down the line when they had start deploying the fiber so this is the reason why they are looking for a lot of flexible products in the market which will give us the uh, options to customize it and change and tweak around the product to be able to uh, provide what is fitting into the uh, application need so fiber densification densification basically leads to, to have a demand of high density solution everywhere so we talk about the the pop uh, locations or the central office uh, locations where we need a great amount of fiber optic uh, network is been uh, terminated and uh, to be able to connect to the devices that we are going to provide services so th these uh, spaces are really confined and central office uh, basically there is a lot of investment is been uh, taken care around in terms of active equipments in terms of air conditioning security and so on and all these spaces are really a kind of a great um, uh, high expensive real estate spaces when it comes as a telecom network. And hence the manufacturers are competing each other uh, to, to really come up with high density solutions to really use a small full footprint as possible from these spaces and to provide large number of user connectivity from these small footprints. And the same goes to actually these products should be also be able to be flexibly used in different platforms, may it be in the, in the rooms or may it be in the outdoor environments in terms of cross connection cabinets or even in high rise buildings in case of bigger cities like in Dubai or in Singapore, you have a lot of high rise buildings and then there are a lot of uh, subscribers within one tall building is being connected to the building distributor and we actually need a high density optical distribution frame in such a uh, project scenario which will offer the highest number of subscribers can be connected from the small footprint now high density means there are challenges we definitely don't want to have these cases what is uh, shown in this uh, two pictures uh, well, this is one of the pictures that i have personally visited in one of the uh, telco rooms and um, we have been asked uh, to uh, to do a kind of uh, uh, revamp study to how to uh, how to convert this uh, this kind of a network into a well organized network that you see on the right hand side this is one of the uses uh, user use case study that I'm, I'm trying to show in this slide wherein uh, you actually can deploy a large number of fibers if you have well organized uh, uh, solutions that will allow you to uh, to really uh, go in the form of a modular and scalable uh, manner of uh, connectivities. So in this example, you can see that these uh, racks are able to give you 700 plus or 1000 plus connectivity. At the same time, the high density solutions in the same footprint can provide you an option uh, to, uh, to use the same space, but uh, to connect large number of subscribers like 5000s and so on. So here comes uh, RNM has uh, introduced in the recent past a uh, smart uh, infrastructure requirement uh, needs a high density uh, like this, which is both uh, each C based uh, solution as well as the 19 inch uh, friend based uh, normal rack system, wherein you are able to uh, have the uh, modularity at the level of three by four U. Uh, which is basically uh, a very high density uh, in terms of uh, space optimization for the SC as well as the LC connectivity. In the highest form factor, we can uh, really uh, densify this fiber down to uh, 96 connectors uh, per quarter, uh, per three, five, three by fourth U, and which leads us uh, into a 42 U height rack will provide us an option to have 5,376 fibers and this is definitely a highest uh, density that we can think about it.
So uh, now these are the building blocks that goes into highest uh, um, high density solutions. Each building block uh, should be able to uh, cater for a high density cables as well, because there are a lot of uh, uh, new fiber optic uh, cable uh, uh, came into the market in terms of ribbon fiber optic uh, uh, cables. And these ribbon fiber cables are really a mass uh, fiber optic uh, cable with the mass splicing features. And we actually need to cater to such cables landing into one sub rack like this, which will give us the option of uh, terminating a large amount of fibers like 288 and 384 uh, splicing in one sub rack. This is really a kind of a good distribution as well as uh, a well manageability of the subscriber from the single circuit point of view. Yeah, so this is uh, uh, the, the, the basic requirement of uh, any operator who is looking into or any planner who is looking into a high density solution is whether that solution is offering you a lot of features like uh, um, fiber patch code management because it's all about the management of these fibers and the patch codes uh, and easy tracing down to each single fibers to the uh, users and back into the uh, feeder system. This is basically, and any ODF can promise you uh, that uh, in, in terms of uh, better, uh, better product uh, in, uh, to be deployed in such locations. So this also need to consider a good bend radius for future applications for the high power laser applications should have an integrated uh, locking and labeling system, which will administer you through a proper documentation and labeling system uh, for the easy identification of the subscribers. Um, a well thought designed uh, sub rack should have uh, features like a, 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 an operation level of uh, a team who will be uh, connecting and disconnecting uh, on a daily basis uh, should not be able to open the uh, system at the same time they are flexibly able to uh, manage the subscribers from the front side without having any hassle. So this uh, system should offer you as well three different uh, movement option of the panel system, uh, which will allow you to have a patch operation, maintenance operation, as well as the complete splice operation without, uh, um, without a movement of fiber or a very minimal movement of fiber, which is in the live uh, scenario. And this is the system overview that we have uh, on, the, on the panels, which will give you all different options of applications that you can think of in the field, whether it is a splice through option or a splice and patch option or a patch only option and uh, breakout option, single circuit option or multi circuit options. So all these uh, different uh, business cases an operator or a planner come up with should have uh, the uh, the availability of this uh, individual building blocks should be uh, able to be flexibly customize it to meet those required applications so for fiber termination unit uh, basically uh, there has to be a proper predefined uh, um, fiber uh, running pathways uh, which is well defined by the system itself because uh, the bend radius is very crucial uh, for the fiber optic uh, network and hence the integrated fiber guide channel which leads the patch cables safely from the horizontal to the vertical patch cable management is very important in terms of these uh, units. This is what is to be built in into a very good thought out product uh, of an optical distribution frame which talk about the high density. Now, in several cases, you also need to offer a separate optical distribution frame uh, for the daily operations without much touching into the splice part. And hence, we need to have a breakout section of optical distribution frame wherein we have the patch cables, uh, patch cables come into that and then patch cables going out of it. It's basically patch in and patch out operations for the daily uh, active uh, activation of the subscribers. So this is one of the a good example of uh, how a mass splicing can be done in a high density application, wherein you have uh, 2,000 fibers or sometimes even 1,500 fibers in a in a 
in a rollable ribbon fiber. We are able to splice it in this kind of high density ODF without any hassles. Basically, the uh, the, the the ribbon fibers, the challenge of the ribbon fibers are really they are they are they are they are like a flattened construction, and the fiber guiding path within the uh, channel should allow a smooth flow of this uh, fiber management in the splicing areas. And also there has to be a splice protection sleeve positions, which is basically a, a fitting for the eight fiber splicing, 12 fiber splicing and so on with various denomination of the ribbon construction that is prevailing in the market. So uh, the, the, the ODF must be able to have a front uh, plate uh, uh, lifting service position. I would say regularly where there has to be some sort of a maintenance activities going on in an optical distribution frame when it comes to a cleaning and uh, you know changing of certain pigtails which is got damaged for any reason. So there has to be a kind of a repair option on a live network without uh, uh, without or a very slight movement of the fibers. And that is facilitated by such kind of intuitive designs built in into the, into the products. So in short, the, the entire ODF is allowing you to have um, 5,300 plus the so, uh, fiber optic connections in LC with high form factor. And if you are going for a low form factor connectivity, and as well as the high form factor connectivity, 2,688 fibers in a C connection. And the, uh, the, the, the biggest advantage of such an ODF system is also that uh, you can access the uh, uh, the patch panels from the front side and from the uh, from the uh, from the sides, and you don't have to actually uh, go into the rear of such an ODF where you or you are able to have a back-to-back -back installation as well as close-to-wall installations in such cases of ODF. When it comes to the multi-platform applications, that takes uh, we might have to deploy these kind of high density solutions into various environments like in a city hybrid environment and sometimes in, in non network crafts and sometimes in the, in the industry standard C cabinet in the central office rooms. So the products should be able to provide a complete uh, platform independent uh, installation features uh, when it comes to the FTTH deployment. Now, coming to the MDU applications, there is a new trend in the market uh, also that the IP65 housings are being deployed outside the buildings. And these are basically for the wall mount applications, for the both splicing only application and splice patch application, and sometimes with splitter implementations. So when it comes to the, uh, the, the last uh, uh, connectivity into the building where you have the fiber to the building uh, scenario, you have the last distribution to the end users are happening from these boxes. So you really need to deploy splitters in this box and the splitter trays, uh, dedicated splitter trays are offering this kind of features into these boxes. The box also should offer a uh, different uh, type of cable entry options with different uh, cable entry grommet sizes. Uh, with a higher modularity concept also in the acceptability of the type of cable that is prevailing the market. Okay, and also the custom fiber splicings or splitting applications. So the custom fibers, when they are entering uh, from the right side of the box, it, all, it actually has to allow the, the routing of these cables and splicing directly with the pigtails, which is uh, definitely a choice of some of the operators instead of the, uh, the field connectors, what is being terminated directly into the cables. So the box should also offer you the splicing of both incoming as well as the outgoing uh, fibers in case of this kind of MDU applications. And this is another requirement that for any maintenance activities to be carried out in the future, we may have to keep some reserve uh, extra loop of storage cables into the boxes and the box should have this kind of features wherein uh, there is a dedicated storage for the loose tube as well as the raw cable after the entry into the cable for the future splicing and upgradation requirements. It's all about the fiber protection. 
So here you can see the 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 pigtail to, should be protected by a, a kind of a plastic casing uh, for uh, no disruption onto the pigtails. And also the splice stress has to be protected beneath that. And the patch cords must be routed in a way uh, that the, 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 the opening and the closing operations of the daily activities should not get hindered uh, for the safety of the fibers. The splitter fixation has to be completely uh, firmly uh, uh, a dedicated location for fixing mechanism should be available in the product that will help us uh, for uh, for uh, avoiding a non-standard installation by the installers. So scalability, when it when it comes to the uh, uh, the boxes, there is a family of boxes that that should look into the uh, identical shape and size, uh, and there has to be a kind of a, a, a upgradability option with different sizing of these boxes. So when it comes to the uh, small subscribers or uh, individual single dwelling unit. Uh, we have the four fiber connectivity as the maximum one, so there has to be a box. Uh, which will allow us to provide the small space as well as the elegant look should be provided for the exterior of the uh, single dwelling unit is, is, is also a key for choice of the boxes. And the boxes should allow uh, various different flexible cable entry options, uh, starting from all kinds of drop cables that is available in the market. And uh, this, is, uh, this is actually the extendability of the boxes from small to the big in terms of applications. Now, uh, customization is actually the key because every country has got uh, different uh, geographic areas. Every country has got different business cases. Operators has got different strategies. So the customization of these solutions is a key aspect when it comes to the fiber to the home deployment and also for the uh, upgradability to the new technologies. So this made the uh, RNM to be pre preferred partner in many of the uh, projects because we are very flexible in terms of customization as well as the modular and scalable products. Now, when it comes to the uh, closures, this is another point where we have to consider the high density application uh, is very crucial. I mean, there are a lot of uh, manholes wherein you have to bring multiple fiber cables into it and then distribute it to various different locations. And this requires a high density fiber, sometimes 1,000 plus fibers to be spliced uh, in, in a closure. And um, there we got a sign closure, and this sign closure is basically um, mechanically sealed uh, technology, and it uses the gel-based uh, cable entry system, and which allow us to have various different types of cables, uh, from the microduct cables to the uh, ribbon cables, or even loose tube standard loose tube cables, and all these cables uh, required a different uh, modular options of these cable entry elements, and. This, uh, the, the connectivity and the splicing will go up to 1,152 splices in terms of high density. So that's the end of my presentation. I'd like to welcome any questions from your side. Um, Thank you, Mr. Shupu. Please, for all attendees, if you have any question, type it in the chat area. So Mr. Shupu can answer. OK, so we have uh, one question for, from Mr. Mohammed Wahab. As I'm an installer of GPON components for Etisalat ODF splitter, UG uh, FDH wall mount uh, FDH of RNA. My question, how can I get brand installer certification as we uh, are upgrading and our product is RNM? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, uh, so you can contact us via email and uh, we will uh, tell you the, uh, the the program that we have. We have actually kind of partner certification program, so we need to uh, get run through that. So you can always send us an email and we can take it pr from that uh, ahead. Okay, we have another question from Mr. Lucas. Could you explain the uh, what products are being manufactured locally in Middle East? Uh, we actually have uh, um, a patch court uh, production facility and we can we are making uh, fiber optic pigtails uh, may it be single mode multi port all type of uh, fiber types we are able to produce the pigtails and patch coats or various different uh, customized lengths and uh, colors we are able to make these patch coats and uh, we have the housing assemblies we have all single parts uh, coming from our various different manufacturing hub and sitting in Dubai. And we, uh, we based on the customer project requirement, we can uh, assemble these boxes with these uh, single parts in place. And we can, uh, whereby expediting the deployment of this project uh, without waiting to, uh, to, to get it delivered from the other parts of the world. So we basically have a concept of uh, being close to the customer as much as possible in terms of supply chain, as well as the customization and flexibility options. So being in Dubai, having this uh, production facility, we are able to cater to our local requirements. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we have something called uh, uh, in the region for the region. So that's basically the slogan. Great. So um, I'm wondering if anybody has another question for Mr. Shibu. So I believe, uh, Mr. Shubu, that's it. So at the end, I can only thank you, Mr. Shubu and Mrs. Sandrine from R&M for this webinar and for your time. And we hope all the attendees enjoyed it and learned today. Looking forward to welcome all, uh, uh, all of you in our next webinar. We will announce all the details soon. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shubu and uh, Sandrine uh, for today's webinar. Thank you very much, Khulud, for organizing this wonderful webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all attendees. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye, Sandrine. Bye-bye.